you can be mentally unwell and still have mental clarity, at least in the eyes of the law, when you are engaging in a pre-planned murder. Because if you have antisocial personality disorder, that's entirely separate from, you know, if you're in a manic uh, episode, if you're engaging in, if you're having some sort of like a manic episode, that's different. Let's hit a trigger warning. Let's issue a trigger warning in the in the audio. Um, let's get started. When a teen killer is excited to reenact these crimes. Uh, we, we noticed a window off to the side, and uh, one person went in and looked and discovered a, a body. Okay, do you know who it is? Yes, I do. Janet and Rick, please. On May 13th, 2012, the family of Rick and Janet Sweet made a horrific discovery at the couple's home in Manchester, Iowa. They had no idea the dark secrets that were soon to be uncovered. Is there but blood? in this twisted case, it was the police who were left shocked at the admissions of a too honest killer. A killer who you will hear from in an exclusive, never-before-heard interview. The relatives of Rick and Janet Sweet had planned to celebrate Mother's Day as was their yearly tradition. But as the family approached the house that day, they instantaneously felt that something was very wrong. This feeling was confirmed when they knocked on the door and no one answered. Immediately, they noticed that one of the windows had been shattered, but in no way could they predict the gruesome findings that lay inside. Peering through the broken glass, they glimpsed a horrifying sight. Rick and Janet were inside, both in pools of blood on their couch, murdered in their own home. Shocked and in a panic, a call to 911 was quickly made. There is apparently a body inside, and I noticed a gunshot wind uh, through the window, and so rather than go in and explore, we're calling you. But a burning question lingered in the air. Who could have committed such an evil act? The horror of the discovery was made all the worse as the investigation began. Rick and Janet's family members... The voice is so crispy that it makes me feel like he's, like, excited at the prospect of murder. ...members quickly informed the police that there was one person still unaccounted for. The couple's 17-year-old grandson, Isaiah Sweet, who lived in the home with them. Fearing that he may have met a similarly grisly end, authorities began looking for the missing teen but they never could have imagined what they would uncover when they finally caught up with Isaiah. On May 14th, the day after the bodies were found, Isaiah was finally located in Cedar... This guy 100% does the cock and ball torture. Isn't that... What was it? Wait, what the fuck? Oh my God, it just unlocked a memory in my head. Oh my God. What was it? Winamp. Winamp. It really whips the llama's ass. Oh my God, you have to be 30 years old to know what, I'm just, what I just rep referenced there. Come zone. Welcome to the come zone. Winamp still exists and runs? Wait, really? You are old. If you know what I just said, you are old as fuck. Winamp. It really whips the llama's... Is, it, is that what it is? is? That's the line, right? It really whips the llama's ass or something? Is that what it, is that what it says? Trapaholics, real trap shit. The rapids, after previously... Yeah. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Is what I would say if I found the bodies. Driving 75 miles to Iowa City. Apparently, the teenager was spotted walking towards a park and was quickly pursued by nearby officers. Isaiah seemingly tried to outrun them, but quickly surrendered once he heard the sound of police dogs on his trail. Now knowing that no harm had come to Isaiah, at least not the kind that his grandparents had suffered, the police were eager to hear if he had any insight into the horrific crime. He was promptly brought in for an interview. You'll notice that Isaiah is in handcuffs, and you'll soon understand why. Put those things off you. Probably feel a little bit better. Oh, yeah. You're going to be good with me, right? Yes, sir. All right. The detective offers to remove Isaiah's handcuffs as a gesture of goodwill and to try and build positive rapport with him. This also serves the purpose of removing the constant reminder that Isaiah is in police custody, which may help him feel more comfortable. 
I'm going to shut this thing for privacy, okay? Yes, sir. Grab some of that food, okay, Isaiah? Isaiah, since we haven't officially met, hey, my nice name's Rich. Scott Rieger. I'm okay, I'm going to need you with the Iowa DCI. I am a police officer. I never don't look like it, but... Mm -hmm. I figure this is a little bit more comfortable. He's like, yeah, I'm uh, a lot more fit, a lot more fit physically. Uh, I don't have that thumb-like presence that you're probably used to. So go ahead and tell you that uh, I am a cop. Although I do not look like a thumb, I am still very much a cop, a police officer. Well, for me, so after this, is there any way I can go to the hospital for this? I get, I cut it open on a rusty fence, and absolutely. I'm pretty sure absolutely. I'm worried about tetanus. Yeah, no, absolutely. Isaiah isn't being interviewed in a typical interrogation room, but instead is in what appears to be the detective's office. This isn't ideal, as there are numerous distractions that will be a constant reminder of where he is. I'm going to show you this here. This is called a statement of rights and an acknowledgement of a waiver, okay? Right to remain silent. Anything I say can and will be used against yep. me in a court of law. I'll write to an attorney if I cannot afford one. One will be appointed to me. You've got those things down already. Yes, sir. Okay, let me read these to you. Is that all right? All right. Why is he so excited? All right. Isaiah may be trying to show off or appear smart by reciting his Miranda rights. However, all he's done is prove that he's quite familiar with the criminal justice process possibly due to past encounters with police. Regardless, it's the detective who must read Isaiah his Miranda rights, and he agrees to continue talking without a lawyer being present. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, smile down. When was the last time you had something to eat? Four days ago. You haven't eaten anything in four days? All right. And we got more food, so if you wall that stuff down, you want to keep going, we've got more food, we can keep it coming. Yeah, you guys make me feel like right? I didn't do anything yeah. wrong. <laughs> Why do you say that? Well, let's put it like this. I'm not going to be lying to you guys about anything you ask me. I appreciate that. No problem. Okay. Isaiah appears to be taken off guard by the warm treatment from the detective, especially when it comes to being offered additional food. This puts the detective in a very good position, and Isaiah may be more inclined to give him the information he wants to continue to receive this kind of treatment. They're not going to take this from me, are they? What is it? This is a real Rolex. Okay, where'd you get that from? I found it in a hobo's tent. Down there? Yeah, in CR. Okay, we'll just keep it up there and we'll call, probably deal with that later. Cops, there was like four or five cops in... In the, Cambridge? Yep, mm -hmm. looking for me. Okay. I and mean, one of them came up to me, started talking to me, asked if I knew where I was. And I was like, no. So he didn't recognize you Yeah, I was like, no, I don't even no, know where he's at. Man. Like, I have my hair back to here. Now, what would have been one of the reasons you were pulling your hair back? Trying to not be seen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. At first, he was asking if I saw the other cops, and I was like, nope. And then he was like, do you know who Isaiah Sweet is? And I was like, no idea. Not a clue who that is. What are you thinking the, the whole time he's asking that? I'm thinking, how fast am I going to run as soon as <laughs> he walks away from me? What I want you to do right now is just kind of relax. Go ahead and eat food. <laughs> kind of mount down. Like I said, I want to kind of start and kind of walk back through some things first. All right. Okay. More than anything, I want to know what the f brought me to what I did, what's wrong with me. Sure. Then, you know... No, like I'm about to start bawling. Okay. Hey, Isaiah, if you if you cry, I, that's totally fine, man. I respect that, okay? You're so, up. I want to go back so bad. How come? Because <laughs> I love them so much, and they didn't deserve that. How come they didn't deserve it? <laughs> If anyone in that house deserved it, I did. More okay. than anyone. You take your time, brother. They raised me since I was four, and I haven't faded much. <laughs> <laughs> Janet and Rick had taken custody of Isaiah when he was just four years old, due to their daughter's inability to care for him. Stacy Sweet, Isaiah's mother, had allegedly suffered from substance abuse and could no longer support her young son. But her parents were more than willing to take him into their home. Immediately, Isaiah will answer one of the questions looming over the investigation. But even with this reveal, there are even more disturbing questions left to be uncovered. When you say what happened that night at the house, what happened? <sighs> Shot over. Okay. <laughs> What'd you shoot him with, Isaiah? An assault rifle. An assault rifle? You remember what it looks like? It's black. Okay. What, uh... Black, bolt action, ten or more round clip. It's, uh, Czechoslovakian. Okay. AR-15. Okay. Okay. 
It takes a lot to admit that, Isaiah. Okay, that's not an easy thing to do. Not a church. That's not error. Okay, and Isaiah, I'm this is play with you. okay, and I appreciate that. Although Isaiah has just admitted to killing his grandparents, the detective so desperately wants to get to the bottom of how this her. That's not an AR-15. Horrific crime came to be. In do it's bolt action, as he correctly pointed out. Um. Doing so, he ensures that there is nothing preventing Isaiah from answering any question that may be thrown his way. How you feeling, right? I mean, you're you're with me right I now, feel right? Like I, well, I don't really know like much. AR and AR-15 stands for assault rifle, or sorry, uh, automatic rifle. Sorry, I fucked it up at first. Okay, well, let me let me ask you this, Isaiah. You understand who I am? Yes, sir. You understand I'm a police officer. Yes, you understand that the guys who brought you up here, why they they had yes, to find sir. you? Okay, and they brought you up there. There's nothing. How can I be doing this for this many years and I still have this many idiots in the chat? No, you're wrong. It's not Armalite. It's it's automatic rifle 15 because it's automatic. Medically right now that's preventing you to talk to me, no, sir. right? But you understand the questions I'm asking you right now? Okay. <laughs> it stands for Armalite rifle after the company that made them. You're wrong. It stands for automatic rifle. Because it's fully automatic. <laughs> They're still doing it. They're still doing it. And the 15 is, is how fast it, it shoots bullets. The 15 stands for the 15 bullets that it shoots from its clip in one second. How'd you learn so much? Holy shit. Yeah. I know a lot about. I know a lot about uh, guns. Not a big deal. It's kind of my thing. Big fan. Yeah. You're wrong and... S <laughs> You're wrong and somehow it's transphobic too. <laughs> yeah, they should actually call it AR-15 for the 14 times that it fucking jams before you can finally shoot it. Low key. Oh, Marat's here. I'm like, what the fuck? Sorry. Okay, now you're just wrong about the jamming thing? No, I'm not. What the fuck are you talking about? It literally is not. It does jam regularly. Are you kidding me? I'm also... Uh, yeah, I'm no longer joking. The jamming the jamming part was actually serious. The, the automatic rifle, whatever, shut the fuck up. But the jamming part is very serious. 1960s called it once your gun throws back. Brother, you literally saw me at the fucking shooting range with the automatic rifle 15 jammed up. That is an insane fucking tank. It, it does. It does. It is worse. It is worse than the AK-47. It, it just is. Okay, let's get back to this conversation, though. That gun was not an AR-15. Right, there's no there's no question that you're not smart enough to handle these, these no, questions. Extremely intelligent. Okay. And you know what? I, I get that. I think you are. I just make stupid choices. Yeah. And sometimes we do, Isaiah. Look at me. I'm never going to be able to go back on it. No. And that's, you know what, Isaiah, part of this... Is it what you're doing today by telling me the whole truth as far as what happened? Not only what's leading up to it, but what happened during it. I know it's going to be tough to walk through, but we need to do that, okay? And then we need to talk about what happened afterwards, okay? All the details we need with this, this is your chance to start healing yourself on the inside. Walk me through Friday. What's going on Friday? Walk me through the time you wake up on Friday morning. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Dude, imagine sending me... Dude, 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 imagine sending me a Snopes article, dude. Come on. Jesus Christ, leftist, like, please stop. I can't tell if you're, like, playing into the meme now by, like, reverse memeing me or if, you, if you're just, like, unironically incapable of, like, playing along with a joke. Like, you just don't understand it. It has to be a joke, right? That's crazy. That, like, I just, I can't. I can't, like, make the most common... Like left leaning joke about Ooh, AR kind of and what it stands for. When someone's gaze drifts to the left after they're asked the question, this generally indicates that there is some inner dialogue going on in their head. This doesn't necessarily mean they're being deceptive. However, detectives will take note of this behavior. Uh, you sat at home on house arrest all day. Okay, and we're then, grandpa and grandma home. And then I went down to the basement. Oh, 
the there's a door that goes into the garage from the basement. I went up to the garage and then in their room took the assault rifle out of their room. And then I loaded it with ten bullets, walked up the stairs, took like a point like this. I had earmuffs on and everything. I took a point like this, stepped up one stair so I could see my grandpa's head. Boom. Pulled the trigger back, pulled the uh, bolt back, shot my grandpa twice in the head. Where was, where was your grandpa sitting? They were both sitting on the couch. Okay. And where were you at? I was on the stairs coming up like... Like coming up from that landing? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I've, I've, I've heard... I haven't been inside your house, but you know, some of the guys were up there the other day and they were kind of going through it. Hollow point assault rifle rounds. And then okay. I went up to him and I just broke out, started crying. I told him how much I loved him. Apparently, the teenager was heading down a tumultuous path filled with partying, substance abuse, and rebellious behavior. During his high school years, Isaiah had supposedly begun to fraternize with a crowd of older kids, where he used substances such as marijuana and methamphetamine. <laughs> marijuana. Of this, he allegedly <laughs> possessed severe <laughs> learning disabilities making his education all the tougher to accomplish. Um yeah, there you go. You get in with the wrong crowd. and I mean, dude, okay, first of all, yeah, I was going to say, Isaiah Sweet was later formally diagnosed with conduct disorder. Seems a little bit more... Fortunately, this only led to further issues, as Isaiah dropped out of high school at the age of 16. It seemed that after this, the unruly teen's dangerous actions were beginning... I do love that, uh, you know... Old school, uh, but uh, the idea, the notion of, of adding marijuana and methamphetamine together is, is sick. It's fucking fire. It actually. How many? Uh -uh. ...to manifest at home. During the course of the last year leading up to the horrendous crime, Janet and Rick had called the police 18 separate times on account of Isaiah's unpredictable nature. On one occasion, that in hindsight would foreshadow the events that followed, Isaiah threatened to kill his grandfather and hurt his grandmother, along with burning the house down. On September 8th, 2011, police once again made their way to the infamous house to try and stop the emerging incident. They instructed Isaiah to- Bro, how the fuck do they literally do this routinely and then nothing comes of it? How? Like, at the top of the hour, you know there's a, a three-minute ad break. Fuck! Three-minute ad break. Here's a three-minute ad break now. ...to calm down, but instead of obeying the command, the angry teenager Maddie, retaliated Saddy, the by five. going at his grandparents once more before being handcuffed and placed on a couch. It's reported that once calm, Isaiah was informed that he would be charged if the officers had to return to the house. Numerous other encounters consisted of the same nature, violence, substance use, and threats. At one point, Isaiah was supposedly threatening Rick and Janet so much that they wanted him to be placed in foster care. But they were promptly notified that this wasn't an option, as Isaiah's mother would have to be the one to take him in, which the grandparents did not want. On April 11th, 2012, the most recent call to the police was made due to the fact that the teenager was using a lighter and aerosol to make a blowtorch inside the house. When police arrived, Janet insisted that rather than arresting Isaiah, she simply wanted him under control. The officers helped to calm the situation before they left without incident. Another call to law enforcement occurred when the grandparents suspected that Isaiah had been using illegal substances which was confirmed once a search discovered a marijuana pipe within the residence. Despite the history of police calls, Isaiah tells a very different story of this turbulent period in his life, and you'll hear it all for yourself. I've tried to kill myself every single night since it happened. <laughs> Take your time, man. <laughs> Again, it's like wild to consider marijuana and a lighter in a conversation where we're talking about a dude who fucking killed like both of his grandparents with a bolt action rifle and not an automatic rifle 15 like he claimed it was. It's possible that Isaiah is seeking attention or sympathy from the detective. I just want to know what's wrong with me. Well, would you agree? That there's, pr there's nothing wrong with you, Isaiah. Would you agree with me on that? From this standpoint, Isaiah, look at me, okay? Okay. 
I don't think that there's anything yeah. wrong with you. I'm just going okay. to prison for the rest of my life. Well, Isaiah, let's not focus on that right now. Let's focus on one getting past this thing right now as far as what happened, okay? If, if you can focus on those details. Maybe it was an automatic bolt action. Um, well, people that know more than I know about guns uh, said that it was an SKS. So, technically, it would be semi-automatic. Why are we talking about the gun again? I don't fucking know. All right. Bill's with me. Okay, we'll worry about all that other stuff later. Okay? You're a normal, smart kid, right? Okay, you're nodding in your head at me, yes. All right? And I've talked, I've spent the last two days with a bunch of our other agents. We've been talking to people that know you. I haven't heard one person that said, you know what? That guy's a moron. You're a smart what? guy. Okay, would you, you, would you agree with me? me ask. Bro, oh, had, the cop is glazing him. Okay, people that used to know you from school. Okay, and Isaiah, the, the story that they're telling us is that you're, you're a pretty smart kid. Would you agree? I'm really intelligent. Yeah, okay. So I don't think that there's anything wrong. I took wrong. an ACT precess stick out of 32. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. But you would agree with me there's nothing wrong with you, right? Just whatever came over me other sure. than that, though. Okay. The detective may be trying to confirm that there is nothing wrong with Isaiah that could potentially indicate that he was not in his right mind when he committed the murders. At the same time, it's possible that he's flattering Isaiah about his intelligence <coughs> as a way to build rapport. <coughs> Let me ask you about this. I think you mentioned that you went downstairs into the basement. Which did you go for first? Did you go for the rifle or did you go for the ammunition? Walk me through that. Okay. When I went downstairs, first... I was just going to hit them both in the head with a bat. Okay. So it wouldn't be so messy, you know. It wouldn't be gunshot from an extremely loud assault rifle. Sure. What's going through your and mind when you're making that choice? When I came up, I came up right behind my grandpa when he was washing ditches with a bat in my hand. I put it right behind his head. Came back like this, and I couldn't do it. That night? Yeah. Okay, did he notice you were back nope. there? And I came up behind him about 15 different Cap. times and he didn't notice me once. Cap. What about your grandma? Nope. Emotionally, it would be much more difficult to kill someone with an object like a bat or knife. It would most likely take numerous strikes to actually kill the victim, so the perpetrator would see their facial expressions and reactions as they were attacked. This may have been part of the reason why Isaiah chose a murder weapon that would almost guarantee a quick finish. It also creates physical distance between the perpetrator and the victim, making it easier to carry out the act. Okay, what was, uh, what, where was Grandma at? She was out room. Someone in the chat said, sheesh, this is not very good PR for guns. Yeah, I was thinking about that, man. <laughs> it's almost like everything we say about guns and how easy it makes to, like, kill people is true. That's what I'm thinking about, too, though. Not the teen killer... Not like the police force that was wholly incapable of doing anything about this dude, even though they knew about him. But instead, like, you know, the fact that... <laughs> the fact that people think that was an AR-15, for example, that's what I was thinking of, like that, which it's not. Mm -hmm. What she was she doing? She was sleeping. Okay. The gunshot woke her up. Okay. The gunshot when you shot your grandfather? She didn't know what to do. She looked over at her husband. His brain was hanging out of his head. Like, I'm not even being exaggerative at all. Sure, and I wasn't up there. Like, this whole part of his head right here was gone. And then my grandma's right here, all that was gone. Okay. Did, did, uh, when you, and uh, we're kind of getting away from that, I know we're going to do that, okay? Go ahead and take a peek and buy your sandwich. Maybe that'll kind of help calm you down a little bit, too. Uh, you know, whenever I get, whenever I get sad, I'll take a bite out of this ham and cheese sandwich. And it calms me down. <laughs> he said, here, have a have a bite of your emotional support sandwich. When you went down to go get you went and got the ammo first, right? We went and got the, what, got the gun. Okay, this was after I had get out with the bat. Okay. What got the, the It fucking worked though, bro. He's like spilling. Salt rifle. Crowded it down in the basement, got in the ammo box to the basement. There's over three thousand rounds for that assault rifle in there. Is, is, does he keep his ammo down there? So you knew his ammunition was downstairs. Yep. Okay. Does he keep it under lock and key or? Nope. Okay. So no. you knew that you knew that you yep. have free access to it. Okay. And so did did you, what did you do next? Got the hollow point rounds because I knew they do the most damage. 
When asked by the detective why he chose the hollow points, <clears throat> Isaiah states that he didn't want his grandparents to go through any pain, indicating that he didn't intend to injure or maim them, but in fact, clearly wanted them to die. So you knew that the, the solid ones, they might have lived through those. Yep. Okay, yeah. you didn't want that. Yeah. But what shot my grandpa, he just dropped, and I heard blood just pouring out of his head. My grandpa looks over, and she's like, what's going on? Boom. Shot right there, grazed her head, and she was still moving. So I shot her right here, through okay. her head. How close were you, Isaiah? Um, I could have made the shot for 300 yards. I'm an amazing shot, but I was probably... Oh my god, he's like flexing, bro. He's so he's excited. Could have made the shot from 300 yards. Like, he's just literally, what a fucking, what a shit. 10 15 feet away. If that, <laughs> okay. well, honestly, from the barrel of the gun to my grandpa said, six, eight feet. Next, the detective asks Isaiah why he wasn't able to go through with using the bat as the murder weapon. What, what, how, why'd you stop? Why didn't you? Why didn't I you use the bat? bring myself to put them through any sort of pain. Okay. And I think you mentioned so nice it would have been too him, messy, dude. too, he right? Was so thoughtful. No, I, that's, I didn't want it to be messy. Okay. That's why I wanted to do it with a bat. Okay. Okay. Did you think the bat would be a cleaner way oh, yeah, to much kill him? Cleaner. Okay. Had you thought, I mean, had you done any research on the internet about this? or? Yes, sir. Okay. What, like, what kind of websites did you go to? Oh, uh, let's put it like this. I was typing in the best way to kill somebody and all this shit. And if I would have waited one more day, I would have killed him the cleanest way possible. Which is what? Nicotine poisoning. And Isaiah, you understand that these are your grandparents. You know that they're human beings, they're people, right? Yeah. You're nodding your head at me, yeah. Okay. Is, is there any particular time why you only shot Grandpa once? Because I heard blood pouring out of his head. Like so you knew fire he, hydrant. you knew he was dead. Oh yeah. Okay. And and why why the two shots with Grandma? She moved right after I shot her. Okay. Did she look at you? Did she say anything after she you shot like her? twitched? And I I thought maybe oh it's probably just the twitch they get after they die where they just like ex create on themselves. Sure. Whatever. Sure. But yep. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. I just wanted to make sure because she was the only one that I actually cared about. Okay. I you think you were closer to your grandma than your grandpa? How long have you been living with him? Since I was four. Okay. And honestly, I wish I would have myself that night. How come? Because <laughs> they didn't deserve it, I did. I don't get it. Like, he just keeps going through in and out. I mean, he's just like, he's just out of his fucking mind. Like, he's just, one, incredibly stoked at the prospect of being able to describe this, like, gruesome thing in detail that uh he did right but then also he just like keeps going in and out of it where he's like oh man i'm such a fucking shit it sucks when <laughs> he's just mentally over. ill and, okay. and like and, and you a know, way that's unmanageable you know that did, did you check to see if they had a pulse <clears throat> did you check them at all my grandma's whole side of her face was blown off and so okay. it's his so and, uh, like his brain was like on the coffee table. okay but you didn't go over yeah. and you know just to just to double I check i both of them and then pack my Loved. Okay, why'd you kiss him? Because I love him. Kissing what? his grandparents after killing them could be an indication that Isaiah may have had some sort of emotional response after all. But at the same time, he may be lying, as he would have likely gotten blood on his face or clothes, and he made no mention of changing before packing his bag and leaving. If he is lying, he may be trying to present himself to the detective as remorseful or caring. Furthering this, Isaiah then states that after he had committed the unthinkable acts, he prayed. Why? New Zealander, why? Why? You should look at the Aramona Miss Murderer. NZ History, Gov, I don't like you. Why are you so mean? Smoking weed and shooting heroin, hashtag same thing. Why are you mean? And Hassanabi is a bitch. It took you, like, literally one recognition to go from hoy to being the worst representation for the fucking Kiwis in the chat. <laughs> Fuck you, Mies! I just turned him into a hater by responding to him. I'm villain. I'm villain. Oop, lol. I'm villain. Yeah, average nice guy.
You're a fucking beach. Hawk out. Need for forgiveness. Did, did you pray for forgiveness because you knew what you did was wrong? Right away, I just did. Right away, I wanted to take it back. I don't know why I did it. Okay. <laughs> after, what up? After, after that, you know, you said you packed up some stuff and then you left. How much time did you spend in the house after, after they were shot? Just half an hour, an hour. Okay. Drove straight to Cedar Rapids. Met up with my ex girlfriend. Play a threw the assault rifle out on 13. Okay. On Highway 13, yep. or didn't see it on the way back. So okay. I figure if someone sees a really nice gun laying on the side, they'll road, probably yeah. pick it up. Okay. I'm surprised the police didn't find it for me. Okay. Well, and we'll talk about that too. Yeah. Okay. This signals that the detective may already have knowledge regarding the murder weapon, and the police might even have it in their possession. As you're as you're as you're getting stuff ready in the house, uh, did you pick up any stuff? Take anything out? This is the first time that there is a long pause prior to Isaiah responding. Long pause. How do you rehabilitate a kid like this? I don't know. There is not really much you can do with people who have antisocial personality disorders. Like, medically speaking, there's not much you can do uh, at the moment. I mean, maybe one day medical science will be better. That doesn't mean you should kill him. But also, there's also another issue with, like, uh, you know, permanent uh, institutionalization of people who are psychopathic. But, of course, that doesn't stop everybody from going. He doesn't have psych psychopathy. He has remorse. Yeah, dude. That's why he keeps going in and out of, like, laughing and then crying and then laughing more and then eating a sandwich. After killing his grandparents. Pauses are often associated with deception, especially if it's not typical of the person's speech patterns. When he finally gathers his thoughts, Isaiah states that he took his TV, knives, hydrocodone pills, and $9 from his grandparents after killing them. He goes on to describe what he did following the crime, which shockingly consisted of going to numerous parties with friends. Are you wearing the same clothes that you were wearing Friday night? Yes, sir. So these are the same clothes that yes, sir. you were shot grandma? Like, nobody fucking swaps in and out that easily, dude. I mean, look, I'm not a trained professional. So, wait, you are not a trained professional or even remotely intelligent enough to throw around a psychi psychiatric diagnosis. Dude, first of all, you're not even wrong, okay? You're not wrong. I am not a trained professional. I'm just a fucking dumb idiot, okay? But also, the fact that you got, like, this mad, account created yesterday, following since yesterday, implies that, like, you are on your 11th account. Stop talking about mental illness if you're mentally ill, okay? How about that? Go get help. You should not be in here with your 700 SOG account. You should be eating your medication. Call my clothes. That's in the impound. Okay, well, are these the clothes that you were wearing when you shot your grandpa and grandma? Yes, sir. Okay, is there any blood on them? From my finger. Okay, what happened to your finger? Oh, from that. But I mean from your Oh, actually, I, I was wearing sweatpants and no shirt when I shot them. Okay. Where's because I didn't want to get blood on these jeans or the shirt. Because they're nice jeans. There's no blood on anything. I made sure I didn't get any sort of... DNA from either of them on me. Okay. This is a direct contradiction to his previous confession of kissing his grandparents after having shot them. If his claim of not wanting to get any blood or DNA on him is true, then he probably wouldn't have physically touched the victims. Where did the blood go when you shot him? Everywhere. Like, blood. Everywhere. Chunks of... Like, the house is massive. And there was, like, points where... It's like, here's the couch. Mm-hmm. Hey, let's go to the kitchen 15 feet away, and there's a chunk of this big laying in there. Can you go look at it? Yeah. What did you think? I picked it up, and I looked at it, and I could see it was from my grandma. Didn't, didn't that freak you out a little bit? Kind of. Kind of? I, I was like, oh, well, I'm a psychotic murderer anyway, so it doesn't okay. really matter. But you're not psychotic. I know you're not psychotic. People often think that any murderer is psychotic, when in actuality, psychotic refers to a specific set of symptoms which may or may not be present in a killer. 
Psychotic generally refers to psychosis, which involves someone losing touch with reality. A person with psychosis may have hallucinations. I mean, we already ruled that out in the instance of this crime, considering that it was pre-planned, considering that there was numerous attempts leading up to this murder, considering the fact that he went downstairs, grabbed the gun, used hollow points, uh, explained all of that shit, and also used a baseball bat numerous times to, like, try and fucking kill him. So he already, he already ruled that out. He can't go to an insane asylum for treatment. I'm just saying that on top of everything else, I mean, this is going to be first-degree murder, pre-planned, all of that. However, uh, on top of the, the premeditation, I think that he is also unwell. That's such a stupid take. Wait, what? No, it's not. That's not true, dude. What are you talking about? Like, he might be... He. I'm saying you can be mentally unwell. You can be mentally unwell and still have mental clarity, at least in the eyes of the law, when you are engaging in a pre-planned murder. For example, the difference between... Uh, oh, are you saying that he his assessment is incorrect? Because if you have antisocial personality disorder or some, some something like that, like uh, sociopathy or, or psychopathy, that's entirely separate from having a uh, an instance where you are having like a, a, a psychotic outbreak... Uh, you know, if you're in a manic uh, episode, if you're engaging in, if you're having some sort of like a manic episode, that's different than when you're like mentally clear verse, uh, but you're still operating. You're operating in a, in a sane way in spite of the fact that you do not have like a, like a, you know, rudder or any kind of uh, empathy. It is about knowing the difference of right and wrong and the consequences of your actions. Yeah nations or delusions and is unable to distinguish between real life and the world inside their head. Isaiah hasn't reported any symptoms of psychosis and he appears to be well aware of what he did, both at the time of the murders and now. The detective likely wants to put on record that Isaiah understands he was not psychotic when he killed his grandparents so that it can be presented as evidence when the case goes to court. Yeah. Feel really good. There you go. That's literally, I yeah, it, it, that's it. He, uh, that was his like predetermination, his, uh, his explanation of how he engaged with the crime immediately rules out any sort of insanity plea, which is exactly what the cop did. Yeah, about myself being so compliant though. Oh, way. You should. I mean, was, and, and here's, here's one of the things too, Isaiah, and I want to make sure that this is abundantly clear is that I know that uh, as we talk through these things, don't embellish anything with me, okay? Sure. You gotta shoot me straight, okay? Yes, I need to know, okay, who was over at the house, who you talked to, and it's not you snitching. You know what that is? It's you telling me the truth. Are they gonna get arrested? I have no control over whether or not they're gonna All get right. arrested. Here, let's put it like this. There was one more gun, okay. and I took that, and but I didn't gun? use it. What gun was that? Uh, sawn off 12 gauge. Okay, what'd you do with that? Sold it. Okay. And then I gave the assault rifle to Brandon Allers, gave the TV to Brandon Allers. So you didn't throw it? Well, spoiler alert, it seems like he also went to jail. You didn't throw away nope. the, the, nope. the gun? Okay. The, and they transported it out of town right away. Okay. How come they transported it out of town? Because they didn't want hot guns. Did you tell them it was hot? They knew I'd kill my grandparents. They came in the house right after it happened. As, okay, and, double and spoiler alert. Be going over to your house on Sunday? He wanted to steal the truck, the white truck. Okay. He wanted that white truck. Did he talk to you about that? Yep. Richard's sweet truck. Oh, it's Richard Sweet's truck. God, I'm so fucking dyslexic sometimes. God, I thought it said Richard's sweet truck. Like, actual photo. It's so sweet. I'm sorry. I just, I'm not, I'm not in the right mental state right now. <laughs> but like, come on. Other people probably thought that too, because that is a sweet truck. This mullet is doing things for me, dude. That is one sweet truck, baby. That engine purrs. How did he talk to you about it? He wanted to know where the title was. He wanted to know where everything was. Or the road of my ass. Okay. And did he tell you that, I mean, had you told him that you'd killed your grandparents? Okay. And what did he say? He was the one who gave me the nicotine poisoning suggestion. I thought you said you got that over the internet. Nope. That was him.
It's possible that rather than protecting other people, as he claimed, he left this part out of the story for self-serving reasons. He may have known that there was no explanation for people being in the house after the murders that would fit with his narrative to the detective about how he was immediately remorseful. If somebody told you what to do, I need to know that. If you found on the internet, I need to know that. But don't mix those two up, okay? You gotta shoot straight with me. He told me straight. about all this, and I looked it up on the internet. Okay, when did he tell you about that? Same day, Friday. On Friday? Yep. What, did, what did you tell him? I told him I was planning on like, killing him, taking some leaving. He was like, you're gonna give me that assault rifle, and that sawed off. Isaiah tells the detective that immediately after shooting his grandparents, he went to pick up Damien, a friend of his, before supposedly bringing him to the crime scene. That fact that Isaiah brought his friend over to the house after committing the brutal act is disturbing to say the least. Isaiah now tells the detective that he took a sawed-off shotgun, a knife, the rifle, the truck, all of his toiletries, the TV, and some clothes from the house. Afterward, he drove Damien back to the house of their friend, Brandon's girlfriends. Then another detective enters the room with food for Isaiah before the two make small talk. Well, honestly, I broke my phone in half a couple nights ago because Dalton calls me and he's like, you killed your grandparents. And I was like, nope, never happened. You know? Bro, they are fucking feeding this kid, bro. Holy shit. They are feeding the fuck out of this kid. How much more is he going to eat, dude? I guess he's just... Bro, this is like watching a Hasanabe broadcast. You know what I mean? Just fucking eating for four hours, dude. What the hell? You know, just denied it all because one of my friends calling. I thought he was just with me. And then this girl sends me a picture of New Squad and a bunch of cops in front of my house. So I snapped my phone in half. As they talk, Isaiah mentions something particularly tragic. My mom doesn't even know what's going on right now. Kind of worried about that, but... Sure. Oh, well. That's understandable. What's your mom? Yeah. Well, she doesn't even know her parents her. are dead. Oh, she doesn't know at all? No, she doesn't know her parents are dead. When was the last time you talked to her? Probably two, three hours before I snapped my phone, I called her. Okay. She was pretty much the only person I didn't tell the real story to. Okay. I told her I was on the run. And a few of my friends, I was like, oh, I stole the truck and just left. Sure. A couple of them. Oh, I killed my grandparents. Oh, well, let me come over to the house and loot. Isaiah's story seemed to be rather... What? There's no way, bro. What is happening? Like, is every fucking teenager like this? I don't understand. I don't believe this, dude. <laughs> There's no way. What the fuck? Average teenager in Ohio... Uh, is like, oh man, that's sick. Like, let me come over and steal your fucking, your your fine china. Let me go a bunch of fucking loot goblins up Jumbled, in here. but this could be out of anxiety from the interrogation or the fact that he knows he is caught and there's no way out at this point. When the first detective enters the room again, he begins to question Isaiah's tale regarding his apprehension. Why, why you run from the cops? What were you afraid of? One of my friends in CR told me that they were going to handle me extremely roughly because I did what I did. Yeah. And I didn't want to get tased or... Sure. I just wanted to get shot. Why do you want to get shot? So that I wouldn't have to get myself. Okay. Why didn't you want to get yourself? Because it was too damn hard. It just didn't work, ever. It just didn't work? It never works. Okay. I just think God wants me here for some damn reason. Okay. Why, why, why do you think then uh, it was okay... To shoot your grandparents, but, but not yourself. What? I mean, that's a tough question to ask, right? That's a wild question to ask. Okay. It wasn't okay, was it? <laughs> Detectives like, here, here's a, here's my service weapon. If you wanna, if you wanna try it out, come on, give it, give it a spin. <laughs> However, his claim about wanting to get shot is incongruent with his behavior of coming forward with his hands up when he was surrounded by police. Isaiah may be once again looking for sympathy from the detective by saying that he wanted them to kill him. Despite Isaiah's confession of his actions before, during, and after the shootings, he still has yet to state exactly why he killed his grandparents. Did you look outside to see if any of the neighbors Oh, likes? yeah. Okay, how come? Well, I mean, why'd you look outside? Because I wanted... Well, I took a shower and packed everything up. I wanted to make sure no neighbors would, like, call the cops. Holy shit. Did you why? I mean, did you check yourself for 
Did you see if you got any blood on your hands? Yeah, I had nothing on me. Nothing? I mean, did you look I was far. I, yeah, I was far enough away to a point where nothing, like, all the stuff went, they all went that way, and I was this way. Okay. okay. I mean, there's probably some traces of guts and brains on my feet, because I kept stepping on people, and those really gross. What were you, I mean, were you barefoot when you shot them? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you haven't washed your feet or anything mm -hmm. since then? Okay. Well, no, I did take a shower with my therapist. Scratch that. This negates Isaiah's previous statement that he took a shower at his house immediately after the shooting and is yet another hiccup in his story. He goes on to explain how his therapist, Candace, is his aggression replacement therapy teacher and is one of the few responsible adults in his life, if not the only one. Later, however... I'm not going to lie, but, like, it didn't take. I'm just, you know, no disrespect to Candace, but, like, probably not the best. Glad that they actually didn't show her face or anything like that. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and assume that that was a bit of a failure, okay? It's not entirely her fault. Not her fault at all. Just not the greatest client, you know? Exactly how Isaiah arrived at her home following the crime will be uncovered. And it only goes to show that wherever Isaiah was, trouble wasn't too far behind. What's aggression replacement treatment? How not to do stupid shit. That gets people besides me hurt. Okay. Like how not to hurt people around you. Okay. I'd pass the class the week this happened. You've been doing pretty good in the class? Good. Okay. Isaiah states that he took the rifle, 12 gauge shotgun, and TV. Okay, that class is garbage. Sorry. That's not a good class. That's a bad class, I think. That's like, if, if a motherfucker had never passed that test, it's this one, okay? TV to Brandon's Ryan apartment Carter. in Cambridge, where the friend was allegedly going to buy the guns. Supposedly, Isaiah was never compensated. As a result of Brandon's involvement, Isaiah has some concerns. I know they're probably going to be in jail for a while for this. But are they going to go to the same building as me? I have no idea. Because I'm really, that's what I'm really, really worried about. I have no idea. I saw Brandon earlier. Really? really? Yeah, I told you we were talking to your friends. What'd you ask? What'd you talk to them about? We were trying to find you. What trying did they to find say out I was? where you were at. They didn't know where you were at. So, did they know where you were at? Damn, Brandon did not snitch. Uh, this guy, on the other hand, he just, oh, he you were the whole yeah. squad up. The whole time? Oh, yeah. I was in contact with them every single day. Okay, with what? My phone. The detective informs Isaiah that he is well aware that the teenager's cell phone had abruptly been shut off during the course of events on Sunday, May 13th. But he wants to hear from Isaiah just how that came to happen. One of my friends sent me a picture of the crime scene and told me I killed my grandparents, so I snapped my phone in half so they couldn't trace it. Okay. I'm so not how a did you? Person. I know you're not. I know you're not. I'm a stupid. very smart criminal. Oh, you are. I've got a criminal mind. Okay. I do. This is likely. Bro, it's like rule number one of being a crimer is just like, don't talk to the cops. Especially without a lawyer present, you shouldn't talk to the cops ever. And this motherfucker literally violated rule number one. I mean, he he's the worst criminal, dude. He told, I'm a smart criminal. I'm a, I have a brilliant criminal mind, he said, to the motherfucking police officer. Insanity a sign of narcissism as Isaiah may see himself as superior and more clever than other people. And once again, the detective portrays a sense of admiration, which is likely to play into Isaiah's narcissism and keep him talking. Built that way? I've got everything. Right? So when you're, when you say you're talking to these guys, when you, when you're kind of on the run before you broke your phone, are you texting them? Or are you communicating with them on Facebook? What are you doing? Texting, calling. Okay. You got any access to the internet on nope. your phone? It was a flip phone. I was tweeting a storm up, though, and I think I updated my Facebook status a couple times through, like, you can text it to Facebook. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. What were you updating on your Facebook? Mm, I don't know what was on Facebook, but I know I was tweeting a bunch of random this old black dude said that was really high, and I thought it was hilarious. Isaiah did, in fact, contact his friends following the murders, even confessing to one of them his additional crime of theft texting a stolen Chevy Avalanche. Yeah. 
his friend's response, a simple LOL, followed by Isaiah's chilling return, I'm nuts. Along with this, Isaiah began to post alarming statements on Twitter, starting on May 11th, the same day of the murders. Isaiah stated, no excuses, no apologies, followed by, I'm dying. But his next quote was even more horrifying, as it was posted around the same time as the violent shooting was committed. At 12.10 a.m. on Saturday, May 12th, he wrote, Time to live my life. The detective switches gears by inquiring. The sanest Comic Sans user, bro. Chevy Avalanche. Cham. His friend's response. A simple LOL. Wait, I want to see what is. I like the party. Music's my escape and tweet and talk to hot girls. Yeah, that's me. People think I'm funny? Question mark. Isaiah began to post. He tweeted, why Gucci Mane so alarming ugly? Alarming statements on Twitter. Starting on May 11th, the same day of the murder. <laughs> that was not bad. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I'm trying to get to it. Isaiah stated. Wait, what was the hashtag? I'm trying to find. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, never mind. Okay, no, he's just racist. Okay, oops. There Day you go. Day of the murders. Isaiah stated, no excuses, no apologies. Followed never mind. By, he's just racist. Also, on top of that. I'm dying. But his next quote was even more horrifying, as it was posted around the same time as the... The least racist motherfucker in Ohio. A violent shooting was committed. At 12.10 a.m. on Saturday, May 12th, he wrote, Time to live my life. The detective switches gears by inquiring about Isaiah's run-in with law enforcement on the early morning of Sunday. Sorry, not Ohio, Iowa. Fuck, Iowa takes so many L's that I can't even remember when Iowa is the responsible party, and I still say uh, uh, Ohio. Like, that's... God damn, that sucks. Sunday, May 13th. You'll recall that this was the day Rick and Janet's bodies were found, two days after they were shot. Apparently, Isaiah had been driving two girls around Iowa City in the previous hours, making several appearances at nearby parties. As the night was coming to a close, they stopped at the fast break convenience store located on Naples Avenue, and someone in the group allegedly tried to open the locked doors of the business, thereby issuing an alarm trigger. When police arrived, Isaiah and his passenger supposedly denied any involvement, but police would later claim they were indeed lying. Not only that, but Isaiah failed to provide a valid license, as his was previously suspended for an unknown reason. In an attempt to cooperate, the passengers allegedly notified the officers that Isaiah was hiding drugs in a duffel bag within the vehicle, along with a hunting knife. But Isaiah denied permission for law enforcement to search his truck, and instead told them that he had various drugs stashed away. Isaiah was quickly taken into police custody, where it was discovered that he launched another string of abnormal tweets. At 6 a.m. on Sunday, May 13th, he posted, Damn, can't wait to get out of the cop shop. Hashtag six unnecessary hours. Numerous others are too explicit to read, but nonetheless, Isaiah... This also goes along with my probably perhaps uh, absolute greatest log of all time, which is that you only post if you're mentally ill and you can never stop posting. And the more mentally ill you get, the more you post, myself included, of course, in this conversation. And you kind of are seeing what's going on here. He got five retweets on that one. He was like, damn, this shit's a hit tweet. Weird though, five retweets and only one like. I don't really understand how that works. How the fuck do you get five retweets on something and only one like? Isaiah was not afraid to say what was on his mind. As he tweeted away on his phone at the police station, officers notified Isaiah that he could only be released upon the authorization of a legal guardian since he was underage. The teenager swiftly realized that this was a massive issue <coughs> as his two legal guardians were, thanks to his doing, no longer alive. According to him, he lied and told law enforcement that his grandparents had been in Minnesota on a fishing trip 
and had limited cell phone service, but they would be able to get in contact with his mother. Sure enough, Stacy allowed Isaiah to be released and handed over to his therapist Candace, where Isaiah supposedly ate sausage, eggs, and hash browns and took a shower. Not too long after his short-term stay at her house, Candace seemed to find a shocking object within her residence and thought that it may have belonged to her patient, Isaiah. Immediately, she contacted the local authorities without his knowledge. Let me ask you this, is, is we got a call from her today. Is there any reason that there was a forty caliber round that was found up there? Mm-mm. Nothing? Did you have a handgun on you at all? No, sir. No forty caliber you rounds? You lie detect me for that. No, okay. sir. Okay, so forty caliber round that would have found up there. Where was it found? That's my, In her house. Really? That's my therapist, dog. <laughs> I'm going to go do more crimes. Mm-hmm. No, sir. Not from you? No, sir. Okay. Absolute, You're sure? Absolutely not. Okay. Although the 40 caliber round was identified at Candace's home, it has never been confirmed as to who it belonged to. Isaiah states that his stay at his therapist's house lasted a mere hour and a half before she... It's one of those instances where he's like already c admitting to like all the crimes that he has committed. So then it's like, why would he lie about this is the question. You know what I mean? Like the... It's so weird. It's so weird because he's so ready to admit... But like all the shit that puts him in jail. Supposedly drove him back to the Cambridge apartments where he met up with a girl named Alicia. Did anybody even try to go to my phone records? That's, that's one of the things that we commonly do is we try and get phone records. Yep. Yep. And every, if you have murder charges or something felony like that, you can get phone records like that. But how do you know that? I know everything. I know, but how do you know that? I mean, you researching it? I know. I know a little bit of everything about everything, honestly. Like, okay. I just, you learn something new every day. Sure. Isaiah appears to possess several narcissistic traits, such as... Bro, you are so smart, brother. Holy shit. He's crazy. <laughs> oh, dude, I know everything. But admitting to the bullet being his isn't the same as admitting a crime, is admitting a mistake, and he's a self-described genius. That's why he won't do it. I mean, he he is... That's actually a good take. Yeah, he's just, like, so fucking stupid. The moment that you say you're, like, a big, brilliant, genius, criminal mastermind, you've already... You've already held the L uh, across the board. So, you make... That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Just being egotistical and having a grandiose sense of self, he views himself as a very smart criminal, which is incredibly ironic, given that he was arrested so soon after the crime and is currently being interrogated. Let me look back at my notes here, make sure I'm not missing anything. If you want, I can look through them and tell you if you miss anything. <laughs> I bet you could. It's possible that Isaiah is once again implying that he thinks he's smarter than the detective and could more easily find any mistakes. He's also likely very curious about what the detective has been writing down about him. But of course, the detective does not allow this to happen. <laughs> so who all do you think you've told about this? Brandon? You told everyone. Before? Or afterwards? I don't know when he started texting people, but... Okay. I got so many goddamn phone calls about, Oh, did you kill your grandparents? I heard you killed your grandparents. Get a little out of hand after a oh, while. Oh, I started freaking out on people. When they took you into custody down there, when they finally got you, did you say you were proud of what you did? It could be a red flag for deception that Isaiah's way of responding has changed from talking at a normal volume to suddenly shaking his head rapidly and responding quite softly. Okay, we heard that you said, hey, I'm proud of what I did, and, you know, I got what's coming to me. No, what I, got, what I said when I got out of the car is, I thank them for apprehending me. Okay. And that they did their jobs right, and I thank them for not tasing me and letting the dog eat me. Okay. Okay. Somebody told us that you'd... And not that this... Somebody must have heard me wrong. Okay. I actually did thank them. And okay. And told them those I respect them a lot for what they did. Okay. And did you say, hey, dude, I, I know and what I, I got coming to me. And I told them I deserve what I got coming to me. Okay. Thank them for apprehending me. Because you understand what you did. Yes. With your grandparents. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it wasn't anybody else that did it. It was you, yep. right? There was nobody else nope. in that house with nope. you. Okay. 
the detective has been concealing a rather large piece of information that go i just don't get it like why did he do any of this shit like obviously like why did you kill your grandparents is the number one question but like murder happens okay it happens people do it but like why did he go to the police why did he escape at first but then he turned around and then like started bragging about it like i it's just so confusing up and down like it makes no goddamn sense what he's doing it just doesn't make sense, like, even internally in the moral system that he's cultivated for himself. I, I just don't understand it. I can't, I cannot comprehend it. Narcissism and mental illness? I just don't, I don't. It just doesn't make any sense, bro. It, it feels like one of those guys that, I mean, it feels like a serial killer type shit. It feels like serial killer type shit where you're like, oh, he did this for no discernible reason other than he's just out of his fucking mind. Goes to show that the killer teen had not been completely honest so far. You know, essentially at the end of the day. You I'm know sure I it makes sense, but we're not psychiatrists. Man, Candace couldn't make sense of it either. Holy shit. Puppy girl Jenna with the hundred gifted subs at the top of the fucking hour too. Are you joking? <laughs> Three minute ad break now. C Mac 0801. Hasanabi. Puppy Play OnlyFans accounts are surprisingly popular. The play parts itself are incredibly in depth and have uh, character arcs, believe it or not. They truly do give you the feeling that you're being the boss over the puppy. It's fascinating. That in and of itself is old school lore. Old school C-Mac lore right there. A certified banger. A classic, if you will. Thank you for uh, bringing that back up. Never said that. Never said that. Yeah, good luck. I, I was going to show you a picture of the gun. Would that be, would that be the gun? It's kind of a dark picture. Yes, it is. How do you know? I know lots of things. Is that the gun that you used? Yes. Okay. What What do you mean, how did you... What? How would he not know? What? You guys have this gun, don't you? Mm-hmm. How? You said earlier that you're, you're pretty smart. We're pretty smart at what we do. Obviously. We do good work. Oh, you traced my phone calls and my text messages and figured out Brandon had it. Yeah. We ended up with the we ended up with the gun. That's what counts. Okay. I mean, I don't what like why is he acting like he's some <laughs> he truly does believe he's a brilliant criminal mastermind, doesn't he? Cause like I mean and he truly is a fucking idiot. Cause like what that like finding the fucking Finding the murder weapon when he didn't really take any sort of initiative to hide it, you know, it didn't take much, I think. Prior to the shooting, Brandon had offered advice to Isaiah on how to use the rifle, which ultimately ended the lives of Janet and Rick. Additionally, the pair discussed other ways to kill the victims. The morning of May 13th, Isaiah told Brandon that he could break into his grandparents' home. I guess home because he's a dumbass who thinks he's smart, he's like, oh, you got to be an even bigger smarty pants than me to be able to take me down because I'm the smartest guy I know. Make whatever he wanted. When Brandon arrived, he snuck into the home, but supposedly left in a hurry and didn't notify the local authorities as he was allegedly nervous about the situation. Still, the question of why has yet to be answered, but as Isaiah reveals what drove him to commit the ultimate crime, he loses all control. I don't know what built up at me. I just had so much stress. Like what? My grandma's dying of cancer. My grandpa called me a piece of shit every night of my life and every day. They, he constantly told me to just kill myself or fall off the earth. They, they treated me like I tried so hard to help my grandma with everything. But my grandpa made everything so hard because he'd always stress me out and scream at me for no reason. And I didn't know what to do anymore, so I just snapped. I 1 million percent do not Shot believe this. I the woman stole the truck. Okay. 
If Isaiah's claims are true, this type of long-term verbal and emotional abuse from his grandpa would have been extremely damaging. However, it's important to keep in mind that he could be lying in order to provide a justification for his actions. After all, he doesn't say that his grandma was abusive, and he still killed her as well. We also cannot verify any of these claims. What did, what did she, and why, why did you, why did you shoot Grandpa first? And he, why? He's made my life a living hell. Okay. How long had you been thinking about doing that? That one day. That one day? That one day. Okay. I, nothing before, because... <clears throat> well, I had thought and thought and thought, but I never really made a plan. Okay, what kind of, when you say I thought and thought and thought, what kind of things are you thinking? I wanted to kill my grandpa, but I never wanted to hurt my grandma. Yeah. <laughs> it's just I kind of just left her there. <sighs> she did it. Isaiah's legs are shaking, possibly from the anxiety of being questioned or reliving the trauma of committing a violent crime. If he had previously been a danger to himself, as he claims, this could also be the cause of his notable trepidation. Okay, and did he see it coming? He didn't even notice. I mean, where was he He was looking? so drunk and high on his oxy, got an hydrocodone, okay. he didn't even know where Let me do this if I can. If you're, stand up real quick. Yes, if I'm your grandpa, sitting over on the couch like he. Uh, Are we okay, this close? Say, you're sitting like this. Okay. Tied it down like that. Bro, this cop is like... <laughs> Actually, one step removed from offering his service weapon to this child. Like, he, dude, what the fuck? He's making him like... Am I crazy? I feel like this is out of the ordinary. I was right about here on the stairs. Okay, so is, is he hunched over? Is he asleep? Yeah, no, no, he's just out of it on his drugs. Yeah, he was hunched like over this. like... Oh, I was on the fourth or fifth stair down at first. So I could, I could see his hair from there. Took, when I took the first shot, I took one step up, a stair up, so I could see his whole head shot. Where did the first shot hit First shot, straight through his head. Right here? Straight, right temple. Okay. Right temple? Oh, uh, no, like right in the temple. Oh, right in the temple. Yeah. Okay, and what'd he do? <sighs> smashed his face off the, smacked his face off the coffee table. Okay. So when you, when you're coming up the stairs, did you kind of sneak up the right. stairs a little bit? How I was like. How come? I didn't want him to hear me. Okay. Okay. And then, like, as soon as... And where's Graham? I took this step right here. Graham would be, like, three feet to the side that of you. Way? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and I went... Stepped up the first stair, took the shot. Stepped up the second stair, took two more shots. Hey, Grandma. By demonstrating how the killings occurred, the detective is solidifying the fact that this shooting was not in self-defense or in any way provoked by his grandparents. <laughs> this cop is just doing it so he can flex when they show this video at the cop expo. Like, look at what I made him do. I made him retell the crime he did in gruesome detail. Very <laughs> terribly. Nobody would ever believe all the it. Other boy, all the other boys at the precinct, they're going to love this when they see me. <laughs> when they see me play the tape. He's assaulted me before. He's done so many different things wrong to me. Okay. But he didn't and, do anything to you that night. And it's just, I could never report any of it. Because my grandma would always vouch for him and make me look like the bad one. Yeah. Like, he'd smoke pot with me. And I'd tell it to the cops. And he'd just be like, nope, never happened. Notice that Isaiah's hands are palm up as he talks which is known as the rogatory position. When someone holds their hands in this way, they may be pleading with the other person to believe what they're saying. The rogatory position and I don't, yeah, guilty. <laughs> indicates a low confidence. So if someone makes a statement that they know for a fact is true, their body language should reflect high confidence. When I got busted for paraphernalia, when I got put on probation, that was his fight. I tried so many times to tell the cops that, but they were like, it's in your room. And I was just like, it was his though. Okay. The detective handles a question raised by Isaiah that is sure to come as a complete surprise. Has their funerals been held yet? No, I don't think they have, Isaiah. I don't know. I haven't heard Would there be any way I'd be able to go to them? That I couldn't tell you. Uh, and I'll tell you, since you're shooting straight with me, I doubt it. 
Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't make that call. Well, I don't want my family to kill me anyways. Okay. Although we were able to hear from Isaiah throughout the interrogation, he spoke with us in an exclusive, never-before-heard interview where he expanded on the alleged abuse and what? gave us a deeper look into what he now believes led to that fateful day. There wasn't any, like, in my head. What? Dude, what the fuck? Explore with us. You're exploring too hard, man. Explore less. They're exploring new territory that, that you know, you're not supposed to be exploring. Okay? Stop exploring, motherfucker. What the fuck? He cooked for 48 minutes. You want to make him cook more? Jesus Christ. <laughs> World premiere. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Welcome to the cum zone. Here's the C-Mac chat message. Oh, no. C-Mac, they caught you in fucking 4K, dude. And it was immortalized, too. God damn. What do, you, what do you say about that? He said, World exclusive. Welcome to the cum zone. Here we have the teenage killer. Explain his gruesome crime in detail. Me, 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 me. And there wasn't any make it to 18. I, fun, I've gotten shot twice before I was 17. I, like, I didn't think I was going to be around that one. Wait, what? That, that wasn't a thought. I didn't. I had no regard for my life whatsoever. Everything I did was so obviously a cry for help that it didn't make sense. And nothing good happened. Nobody tried to help. Nothing. So in my head, I was like, all right, I'm on my own. So I'm just going to, I don't know, like, what do I do? And then once I'm on house arrest, like, you can't even get away from the problem at this point. So how do you eliminate He's right, though. The fuck do you mean, bro? They like tried to. Okay. Okay. God damn it! Some people are like, maybe perhaps too empathetic, or it's the it's the thirty percent rule, right? You can get thirty percent of Americans to agree on anything. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? He's right. He had grandparents that like took care of him. He had therapy. Even when, like, cops came to, like, detain him, to calm him down, they were like, please don't arrest him. We just want you to, like, de-escalate the situation, which is a weird thing to say. But, like, clearly, they were not trying. They did not. They wanted to give him to the foster care service, but, like, not back to the mom. Oh, he meant uh, puppy play? He's right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've, I've never... I've never watched it. Never mind. Okay. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not Mobile chatter got clapped because, you know, the delay. That other people failing me throughout my life is the reason I did it. I, at the end of the day, I'm the reason I did it. I chose to do what I did. But a lot of things could have happened if I would have had options. Isaiah explains the alleged abuse that he endured at the hands of Rick and Janet. We had those kind of interactions where I'm like, hey, like, like they'd call the cops. And I'd be like... He literally just hit me, and I defended myself. What am I supposed to do? Or, like, he had a bunch of plants in the backyard, and they knew about it. And they were like, oh, that's just itch weed. Just leave that alone. And they just pulled the plants and left them alone. And there was a few occasions where I was like, okay, he assaulted me, like literally. And my grandma would be like, no, it didn't happen that way. He hit him first. And they'd be like, well, if you press charges, you're both going to go to jail because they both say that you did it first. And it's their word against yours. And no one's going to listen to a dumb kid. Who cares about the kid, right? doesn't matter if a 15-year-old's getting his ass kicked. That's, that's irrelevant. His claims about his feelings toward his grandmother seem to be ever-changing. During this particular account, it seems he's placing at least some of the blame on her which is in contrast to his statements during his interrogation. I wanted to kill my grandpa, but I never wanted to hurt my grandma. She, she was a mega enabler, and the, the verbal abuse and the emotional abuse was from her. She was the one that was doing a lot of the screaming, and, like, she'd always back him up. And, like, great example, I was, I attempted, I was like. You got on TikTok? No, man. That's therapy.
Literally, that's therapy. That's the type of dude who, like, weaponizes therapy, okay? There's a lot of motherfuckers like this. Half a TikTok is like this, okay? Narcissistic people. Narcissistic people that use, like, language they learn in therapy to justify their abusive actions or their horrific actions in general. I'm just going to leave. And she's like, I wish you would have just ended up yourself and making it work. It would have been a lot easier on us. Like, she'd say shit like that. Well, I don't want to just tell my story because it'll help me get out. Because obviously I know that. That's one of the first thoughts. But the first thought, the initial thought, is this could help a lot of kids. Like if some kid that's 16 years old is getting his ass beat, hears me talk about it and how it feels to be alone, and it helps them, and they actually go and talk to somebody about it, then that's worth telling my story. But he did. He was in therapy. That's worth me living all the point. Oh, man. This guy's a, this guy's a, is a wonderful example for our youth, I think. Yeah, hopefully uh, people don't feel alone, and then they go and, you know. He'll, he'll, be a, he'll be a really good example for kids who want to fucking murder their grandparents. Like, the biggest thing I want to do with my life, I want to be an advocate for at-risk youth, because I feel like if somebody would have just talked to me and really understood what I was going through and been like, hey, I get that, like, but you're okay. Like, you're not by yourself. I think that probably would have changed a lot because the, the hardest part about it was feeling like I was alone. Today, Isaiah has seemingly found a new path, even accomplishing some rehabilitative programming along with achieving his career readiness certificate. His co-conspirator, Brandon Allers, took a plea agreement to testify against Isaiah and was sentenced to 18 years in prison for his part in the horrific murders. This story... As much as I believe in rehabilitation, I, I'm something, so, something smells wrong here, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I do believe in rehabilitation, but, like, something, something feels weird It doesn't about end this. here, though. When police were finally able to search the grandparents' home, they allegedly found numerous internet searches on one of the computers, locating various methods on how to kill someone. In another sickening find, according to news sources, authorities supposedly uncovered inappropriate photos of children. The pictures were allegedly found under the grandfather's account, but nothing else has ever been revealed about the her Wait, what the fuck? That's a big plot twist. Hold up. Horrendous discovery. During Isaiah's trial, a clinical psychologist testified that during the time period of the crime, Isaiah possessed the emotional maturity of a 12 to 14 year old. But this did not stop the killer from facing the inevitable consequences. Initially, Isaiah was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. But in an unexpected turn of events, the judgment was overturned. After four years behind bars, Isaiah was resentenced to life in prison with a chance at parole, without a minimum incarceration time. This means that there is no telling when or if he will. That's an insane piece of, hold up. That's an insane piece of fucking uh, information to like reveal at the end, which I do feel like, I. He was denied parole in 2018. I mean, story now sounds possible. I mean, I just don't know if that's like, if that was his or his grandfather's. Why didn't they also like, you know, look into it further? This is like weird. We don't know if he was the one who was like engaging in that or his grandparents.